Put down your devil drink, tighten your belts, and summon your dead grandpa. Because we're going to Goblin Town. We saw Troll 2, so you know what that means. Now it's time for... Hello, people of Earth, and hello, people of the internet. Welcome to How Did This Get Made's virtual live stream in conjunction with MoveOn.org. We have a great show for you tonight. This movie. In 1990, this film was released into the world, and there is a lot of debate about this film. Is it the best, worst movie of all time? It's a sequel to a film called Troll, but there's no relation to that film by director, characters, or anything. This movie was called Goblin. Now, if you want to know what the premise of uh, Troll 2 is, I kind of pulled this off the internet here. I thought this would be good. Wikipedia says, when young Joshua learns that he'll be going on vacation with his family to a small town called Nilbog, he protests adamantly. He is warned by the spirit of his deceased grandfather that goblins populate the town. His parents... Michael and Diana dismiss his apprehensions, but soon learn to appreciate their son's warnings. Guided by his grandfather's ghost, will Joshua and his family stand a chance in fighting off these evil beings? That is the premise of the film. I mean, perfectly said, really. I I, I think this movie is really uh, an expose. It really highlights the villainy uh veganism uh shows you that <laughs> that that that's really what this movie is getting at the vegetarians need to be defeated and you know what to break down this film to to get into all the nitty-gritty goodness and i don't even know if that's quite possible uh i have to introduce my two co-hosts ladies and gentlemen please welcome jason manzukis yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Let's go! Here we go! Wow! <laughs> What's up, jerks? Yes! Hoo-wee. Jason, Paul, Troll 2, where do you fall? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Never seen this movie. We have just watched Troll. I watched this entire movie and was flummoxed that this was not a sequel to the movie we watched. <laughs> this, I believe, is a movie called Goblins. Yes. That is all it is. There's not yes. a troll in this goddamn movie. No, what the it's fuck aggressively is going trollish. On? <laughs> oh man, that gave me a panic attack. I kept being like, "Where's Harry Potter? Where's all this stuff that I know is troll?" No, yeah, we, you. There is nothing from that first film, but that first film was such a moderate success. That they were like, "We we have to call this troll too." Like we got well, to. Yeah, this just reeks of they had a script for something called Goblins, and we're like, "Fuck it, it's called Troll Two now. Put it out. Go." Uh, for the irony of it is I believe that um, uh, Troll 1 was a film shot in Italy based in America, and okay. Troll 2 is a film made by uh, Italians in America. So <laughs> is that's it about really? The- You're telling me everybody in this movie was Italian? Uh, no. And, all the, and that's uh, the, why the performances were like this? The writer they and learned director. everything phonetically? There's so much to get into, but first... Let's talk about a woman who on previous episodes have said, we got to talk about the color green, and I'm sure it will also come up here tonight. Miss June Diane Raphael. Welcome, June. Hi. (laughs) Hi. (laughs) Hi, Paul. Hi, Jason. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi, (laughs) viewers and and guests alike. I... uh... The first thing I want to say, and then we will get into it and we will start the show, but I I know Move On has so much work to do across these United States. But after watching this movie, I realized we have a lot of work left to do. <laughs> you know what? It's starting to feel like we're all living in Nilbog. Yeah. Like <laughs> we have, there's more, there's a lot more meat on the bone. You know, if Yeah, this, we think we're through it. And then this and then we see something like this and I'm like, God, I'm never going to get out of doing this goddamn show. I mean, look, I I just took a little peek at that uh, new Dennis Quaid movie, Reagan, that came out. I'm like, wow, they're they're still making them. They're still making movies. He he did a a biopic about the Australian breakdancer. (laughs) 
a ray gun? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ray well, gun? Let me just ask. No. I, wanna, I, I have to say something, and I want to. I want Thank to you, be. Adam. You uh, brought an Adam before us, Dan. We got to introduce Adam. <laughs> Bring him on. Bring him on. Right. Bring him out. All right. All right. I'll bring him out. All right. You know, and a tonight- biopic <laughs> about the Australian breakdancer starring Dennis Quaid. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Scott and How Did This Get Made All Star back on the show. Adam, you were so missed in our Fast 10 discussion. Uh, you are away oh, shooting and we have missed you on the show many times. So we're so excited to have you here for such a big, big night, a big show. So thank you for being here with us. Well, thank you for having me, you guys. You know, I I, I knew, I thought I'd seen Troll 2 and then I sat down the other day to actually watch it and went through and I own it. It is on all of my devices. <laughs> As it turns out, it's just been sitting there for like 15 years. So... Well, Holy I realized this movie. I realized Ooh. I actually watched the documentary Best Worst Movie, which is yeah. fantastic and made by uh, the boy in the movie, um, a, like Joshua. Uh, oh, uh, Joshua. Yeah, Michael uh, well, is the well, actor's let's just name. Just call him yeah. the boy. Okay, well, the boy, the boy uh, from the movie, <laughs> and he made an amazing documentary, which I think everyone needs to see after you're done with this episode because it, it's it's really beautiful. Um, and that's what I realized I'd watched. I'd never actually watched the film. Mm. Oh, so, wow. It really, it was, and, and by the way, they work in either order. I love the idea that people are watching that documentary. And then there's going to be people who probably listen to this podcast, but don't actually get to the source material. We will play plenty of clips tonight okay. because I think it's, it's, it, this is a film worthy of clips. I'll be honest, just watching the trailer right now, as you played it, Paul, that's essentially most of the movie. We want that <laughs> trailer had to be seven minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's you know like you that got, yeah. trailer plus just like an hour and a half of shoe leather. And that's the movie. Oh, every they show us every bit of travel. Everything. If they're going from here to there, you're seeing every oh, yeah. step of the way, every jog, every they watch. We watch that kid stretch before he jogs yeah, into that's town. Right. What? We really did watch that teen boy <laughs> stretch. This movie. What's so interesting about it, too, is like. You know, it's a low budget film and it's the first time I've ever seen driving scenes where they're not like on a process trailer, like they really are driving. So the actors can't really take their eyes off the road. Like they're what he's trying to do his lines over his shoulder, but he, he, th <laughs> those eyes are like, uh, we'll crash the car. Um, but I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited tonight. Um, hold on one second. It's my two clips. clips oh my wait, God. no, Paul, oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. don't drink it. I, I, don't I'm don't glad drink I'm just it. A, oh, I just had it. Was this here? Okay, well, I mean, I'll oh, get back. To, I'll get back to it in a second. It no, does uh, feel do like that. everything in the movie is taking place during like when Shamrock shakes are being sold. <laughs> like it was the green was so green as to make me feel as though it was part of like irish mythology or something well you know what yeah. i have to say this this is what's really weird about the movie like and i we're gonna get into so much this is, and I, this is what's weird about it well right this, now. Is, this is and the only thing is the only thing that's weird and 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 struck me that they, they are so hungry and i'd love to talk yeah. about the time frame of the movie and oh, yeah. how long the movie yeah. takes place over but they have not eaten and the food that is presented to them, that the goblins present to them, is so disgusting looking. So gross. So it gross. It is so, it's beige. It's like and the then worst green. supermarket cakes that you would yeah. ever see. It's, it's all like, oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> cakes and puddings and just goo. And they're and like, everything it's delicious. Everything has writing on it. Everything it, has yes. writing on it. Enjoy or this yeah. or that. Everything. A lot of piping. It feels like. Yeah, a lot of piping, a lot of amateur piping, and everything yeah. feels like it's also on an episode of, like, Is This Cake? Yes. <laughs> you know? Well, let me tell you this. We got so much to unpack. Let's get into it. This movie starts with, I mean, really, uh, it reminded me of A Princess Bride. I mean, this is it's like a exactly. Peter Falk. <laughs> a is Peter that, I Falk and like, Lil' I feel story. like Grandpa Seth is even doing Peter Falk's cadence. It, you know? Yes. The weirdest thing is, like, when, it, you know, it starts off and you see this, like, little... Pied Piper running in the forest. But the weird thing is, is like the boy interrupts the story and the grandfather's like, listen. And then a close up on the grandfather's lips, which I've never seen done when like it's that. not like supposed to be sexy. Like yeah, I've only, yeah. like, lips when it's not like, a grandpa's lips. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and he's not, it's like as if these are the most important words. It's also, it's a close up on his lips sideways. It's not like a close up like this. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and bearded it's very as well. weird 
Let me ask a question about Grandpa Seth real quick. And I, I actually am going to say I'm going to be very honest and open and vulnerable right now and just Ooh. say, yeah, I'm going to be very, very open and speak my truth, which is that I don't quite understand the difference between a goblin and a troll. Oh, June, I'm uh-huh. so happy you said this. because I don't quite know what the difference is between the two. Molly, our, uh, our amazing producer, Molly, thought that this might come up and she pulled something that I have access to called the Folklore Creatures Cheat Sheet. Uh, so if you'd like <laughs> to know, I could tell you by definition what a goblin and a troll is. Or you can guess. I don't know The FCCS. Yeah, you've got one of those. I, I don't... <laughs> I guess, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask a follow-up question. Because, well, f- well, what I was going to ask about Grandpa Seth was I couldn't understand throughout the movie why Grandpa Seth had taken us through this entire journey. And yes. why they were intent on doing this Airbnb exchange and, right. and living the life of farmers and their ancestors on the land and why Grandpa Seth was foregrounding the, it Was he a troll or a goblin right. at some point? And why did oh. the goblin, why did the troll goblin say that he'd been in, he was in hell? Like, yeah. I didn't understand. I didn't understand, I didn't understand that what the trolls and the, go- I guess trolls, because let's be honest, we're going to say troll, but there is no mention of trolls in the entire movie. It's just goblins. goblins. So my, I didn't understand how the goblins were related to like the idea of heaven or hell. They seem to be folkloric beings from fairy tales, but are somehow snapping people to and from hell. But, uh, the, I, but Grandpa Seth literally says as he's like almost dying right before he tosses that. Molotov cocktail lightning bolt <laughs> at the the vegan no. preacher. Yeah. He says, I, "I wasn't really in hell." Like he, right. he, he just he's like, "I don't, don't believe By that." By the part. way, <laughs> the 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 rules for seeing Grandpa for Grandpa appearing aren't aren't clear and or consistent. Like sometimes it's the mirror, but the yeah. the first time we see him in a, in a mirror isn't until like forty minutes into the movie. It happens twice, and then he looks into another mirror to try and summon him. And he doesn't appear again in a mirror for the rest of the movie. When we think. introduce you to him, he's in a chair, a rocking yeah, chair. That's and, right. And then sometimes he's like hiding behind the outside of a window. Why is he in the house? Like right. well, sometimes he is taking the place of another actual corporeal human being, i.e. the hitchhiker. Like when uh, Joshua says, saying, I'm right. going to throw up, I'm going to throw up. I'm sorry, when the boy, when the boy says, I'm going to throw up, I'm going to throw up, he gets out of the car and he runs directly to the to the hitchhiker and it's just Grandpa Seth's face. Um, it, it, he's having, like, this, I, I was deeply worried for the boy. Well, yes. I was worried point. for the yes. boy, too, because of the way that our parents were handling the boy's grief. Oh, Jen. Oh, man. This is- I really, you know, and especially the mom who... I, I could talk about for roughly the next two and a half hours. Yes, indeed. I, you know, both of those I, parents. Both, both of, parents. of those parents. And I, horrifying. I, I just talk about, quickly. Just, I also need to go ahead, please. <laughs> well, just quickly. I need to talk about the reveal of dad. I need to talk about his pajamas. I no, need to talk please. about dad's we talk pajamas about this, and how they are unbuttoned. never, they are constantly being more and more unbuttoned. Here's and the thing, collar up for ev- on PJs. For every yes. $50,000 we raise, I will unbutton <laughs> one more button but not until that, I'm but full also, dad pajamas. He has his leg up too. It That's is going to take like $350,000 to get that low. <laughs> <laughs> he he is taken. He is in such a state. Like he looks like he is ready, like ready for love. I mean, and oh, his wife yeah. looks like she has been already possessed by the goblins. Like from 100%. moment one to the end, she definitely feels like it. Also, definitely feels to me as though the dad, the actor, is constantly being like, "I think we've been fooling around." You know, and then yes. they're like, no, 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 Absolutely that's not what this is. Jason. And then he's like, he, between takes, because there's the first scene where he's wearing, there's two scenes where he's wearing pajamas. The first scene, there's two different angles. And in one, he's buttoned up. And in the other, he's buttoned completely open. Right. Like that's he's right. playing the scene his way, which is 
you know, it's like when Jeff Bridges said to the Coen brothers on The Big Lebowski before every take, do you think the dude burned one before in the car on the way over? Uh, this guy's like, oh, I think we were just doing it. Right? Yeah. But he has all these ideas, but then the camera turns on and he freezes up and does what he did in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, the the opening line of the dad really does feel like you're watching the worst improv scene at all, of all times. Like, yeah. yeah, okay, great. So we'll do business yeah. and uh, we'll make sure that business. that thing is business is done. All yeah, right, great. great. Well, we'll see you. <laughs> okay. I was actually obsessed with that because I kind of was concerned about that business because the, it is so vague and they're going yeah. on this vacation. Now, they are also – this family fascinates me because – they are in grief. We have well, how learned long so, did the grandpa it's been six die? Months. Because six months. Okay, it's been and six months. But I for for some of us that's no time. I think I that agree. Seems like an in, he he seems like a big part of their lives. Uh, grandpa Seth seems like he was a big part of their lives. And they're dealing with it differently. And his the yes. daughter, they literally his, don't give yes. a shit except for the little boy. His well, daughter the daughter says, is getting jacked. The daughter's getting jacked, I'm assuming, in order to fight death. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wait, She's I want to talk about the daughter. I just want to... She just wanna... has so much weight. She has so much exercise equipment in her room. <laughs> and she's lifting weights. They cut oh, yeah. away for like 20 minutes and come back. She's still pumping and iron. Adam, Same exercise. Only Same upper exercise. body work. Only and, upper and, body. And again, camera lingers where? The sexiest part. The ne- the neck the <laughs> in the, like that part of the neck the that just right yeah right, right there yeah. the nape of the neck well that's the sweat collector when you're lying <laughs> back on the bench that's that's where you get that's a right. that's a shot glass full of sweat Paul <laughs> I mean Come I've on. talked about cum gutters before I don't know if that's sweat gutters uh, up top is that you got yeah, cum gutters at the bottom sweat gutters, gutters. <laughs> um, I'll tell you this I laughed the hardest when it was poster of Johnny Depp poster of Tom Cruise image of a Smurf <laughs> yep <laughs> like. <laughs> Rule okay, the full not gamut. Really. You know what? I actually I would thought about that later on when she's having her conversation with Elliot, the boyfriend, Elliot. Um, and she's first of all, she switches gears so quickly with him. I couldn't I couldn't follow where she was. Poor guy. But poor guy. But at some at a certain point in that bedroom scene with them with him, she does seem to want to have sex with him. Oh, big I time. Think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can but we watch clip two? Is... Can we watch clip two and just see it? Just like, let's enjoy sure. it first. Like, here we go. This is the scene. I like you. But my family doesn't like you. They say you're good for nothing and that you spend way too much time with your friends. Oh, oh, but I swear I never see them. Elliot, how long is this going to take? We're sick of waiting for you. I don't, I don't you want to come to Tonino's with us, Holly? Uh, don't you want some pizza? Man, you know, these are cute. These are cute. Hey! hey. 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 Do you see... What's wrong with having friends? Nothing. If you want to remain a virgin for life, you take them to bed with you, too. <laughs> and I don't believe in group sex. Is it true that your family is going on vacation tomorrow? Yes. I'll come with you. Okay, I'll tell my father that you're coming with us tomorrow. Where are we going? Nilbog, a wonderful half-empty town. Half-empty? It's an exchange. <laughs> a family from the country is coming to live here, <laughs> and we're going to live in their house. Oh, Elliot, it will be wonderful. You and me in the woods. This time, we'll be able to be together for sure. Yeah. I, you said it, it, Adam, half empty. I mean, half empty is like, let how, me ask this question, this? though, Paul. Like, so, so this is a big storyline throughout the movie. That, and that the fact that he wants to be with friends, that he yeah. has too many friends. This is a big issue for them. And I couldn't help but wonder, number one, why do they truly, why do they care that he has friends? Yeah. Why does that, why? doesn't that, why, that's, that would seem to me why? to be like, oh, he's got a group of friends. Okay. Like he, they're social. But unless, then, Jason, unless they're being then, shown to be demonstrably bad. Which kids, they are but not. They're, not. they're goofy kids. They're kind but of then nerds. also, why does he have those friends around him all this, the time? This is, I think yeah. there's a little bit of gay panic in here. Yes. Cause she's like, you are a homo. 
because you're hanging out with your friends. Like you basically, take them to like, bed but also with you. her dad, her dad is his bit is biggest criticism is that he's always hanging out with those friends. Yeah. It, that's like wow. that's the reason the parents don't like him either. Is that she, they're he's not making her the priority. I'm not sure what it is. It it doesn't make any sense because the the honestly Elliot and his friends seem like perfectly lovely doofuses. You they're know? knuckleheads. They're um, real knuckleheads. Ar- but are they the Arnold? Best. Poor Arnold, who gets turned into a tree <laughs> and cut down with a chainsaw. Uh, Arnold these, deserved it. Arnold deserved dorks. it. My favorite scene. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get about there. Them. I wish the movie was about the, Me, the four too. idiots in the RV. Where'd they get the RV? The I so many I had questions about that RV. Minutes I wish I had 15 minutes of them just finding and getting the RV. But There's Jason, a I actually, there. but I thought at a certain point in the movie, I was like, oh, they already had this RV. They've. Oh, yeah. Because the, but they, yet first they, all, they said that very they kept them there. waiting 90 minutes, but then they're yeah. ahead of them. So the boyfriend clearly left earlier than them. Yeah. No one's communicating anything like the boyfriend. Then he does want to be with her. He just forgot to tell her that he left early because they're on the side of the road seeing them. It makes like I can't figure out if this guy's a dick or if he's not like normally these movies, they let you know one way or the other, like Adventures of Babysitting when it's like uh, Bradley Whitford. Uh, you know, we know he's kind of a, a, a bad dude, you know, here uh, like we don't know. But the dad, I yeah. think th- th- he does have that RV because the dad sees the RV from like three quarters of a mile away and is like, it's your boyfriend with his no good friends. Like it is super so, far. Yeah. So he knew, knows exactly who it is. And I was wondering, as far as the gay panic goes, are they trying to infer that these guys, because they wake up in the bed, the two guys are like in a, a small bed without clothes on waking up in the morning together. Are they actually trying to infer that they are actually gay together no Maybe. right they're just trying no to- because they're also well, trying to deflower people because when they hear right. that scream they're like uh oh we did it like <laughs> yeah 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 oh, they're women. so into this town full of like a <laughs> the town of 25 women. people yes. 25 <laughs> well, that has a sheriff but but there is i was just going to say there's one moment that did make me think that the guys were fucking each other in the oh, rv because right. Because it's when she shows up around the corner of the RV, Holly, the daughter, Mm -hmm. and she's walking and she's big mad and she's going to say her piece. And he comes out of that RV looking. There's no other way to say it, but freshly fucked. Yes. He's looking disheveled and... And hiding something behind there, it it. I did not know how to read that scene. Hmm. You saw it too, Adam. One hundred percent. I thought these guys wow. were all fucking each other in the RV. Interesting. This oh, is wow. an open time. This is the eighties. People I love are it. trying stuff. They're having fun. It's not even. <laughs> we they? don't have to label it. It's poly. <laughs> it's just fun. It's a polycule in there. That's wonderful. If you can't or find a girl, wonderful. you sleep with your friend. Sure. It's, they, what, we're not no, judging here. Guys, we're doing vacation swaps. Right. <laughs> we love it. We love it. Listen, <laughs> if the RVs are rocking, don't come on knocking. <laughs> By the way, just just to go back to them going on this fucking trip in the first place. <laughs> They go, they, they want to go. The dad really wants to go to their ancestors or farmers and peasants, just like our ancestors. But the people who they're doing the house swap with are complete strangers, right? They aren't family. Am I right about no. that? This is yeah. where they, our family. They, seems, they seem to be like stymied again when they realize that the people have not left the town That's and right. are still there. That's right. I okay. guess my question is this. Why is it so complicated for these goblins? Like, it's like they're setting up so much systems. Like, just throw the spear, the wooden spear at them. Like, why do well, they have to? Paul, why why well, all Paul, this? I, yeah. I have even a bigger question. I want to okay. pull out even further because okay. I, and again, I could have misread this. And we know that that's possible. But I believe this movie is about, you said it in the beginning, these goblins having to eat plants and having to eat vegetation. And okay. so what they do to feed on, to to feed themselves. So what they do is they end up turning these human beings made of meat into vegetation that they can eat. 
And then they yeah, eat them. Remember but the, why yeah. why not just eat plants? I felt like, because it, it worked in different ways, right? Arnold gets turned into a tree that needs to be cut down. The girl that Arnold is chasing turns into a puddle of goo. Yeah. But like, they I, eat that puddle of goo. I felt like, oh, are the goo. humans, are they using the people as like manure, basically, right. as something that the plants can grow out of? But no, because sometimes the people just turn into a puddle of green goo and that they start eating. They eat so the goo. I don't yeah. know. And so, that goo is not vegan. It's made of melted people. That's no, not I think that I think that like what they're talking about. Well, first of all, sap in this movie, everything that's sap is green, which I don't think that's the color of sap. Uh, again, I'm no botanist, uh, but sap is green in this movie. And I think when they give them a bite of the plant life, their bodies, uh, it, it runs through their system and then their body turns to plant. So that's why they're sweating green. Yes, it's green they is become, pouring down. They, so they they're, become plant. They're re- well, the the grandfather, grandpa uh, Seth, when he's talking to the boy, says chlorophyll at the beginning of the okay. movie, right? As the only I feel like word that gives us a sense of like, oh well, of course, chlorophyll. Right. I mean, it is. It's, green, it's, it is. Right? It's bizarre because it's yeah. like everything is so green. I'm sorry. Paul, oh, and um, Paul, that. that's a Paul. different one. Well, Paul, that's a different it, it, dr- green. Do not. Eat. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh wait. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I got confused. No, I got, I'm no. so sorry. Oh, it's no. too late. It's too late, you guys. Yeah, you did it. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is it is like but I guess my question is this. They want to kill humans. Easy peasy. But why do they have to make them like why do they have to trick them with these elaborate meals when they check into that house? There's like a whole buffet set up. In the house, you know, or not even buffet, a full dinner. Oh, wow. This well, scene. they would have eaten it, except that Grandpa Seth arrives on the scene with time freezing powers, FYI. Yes. And incentivizes yes. the, and incentivizes <laughs> the boy to dot, 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 piss on the food. Piss. So when those people on wake dinner. up, let's keep in mind, well, we cut away from the boy on the table opening his pants. When these people wake up, they wake up mid bite and their son slash brother is standing on the table pissing all over them. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, this movie, this is also, insane. he doesn't tell him to piss. That's the nope. thing I, I rewatch because he doesn't say like, he's like, you have to stop them. Then the boy I'll be honest. That was my first impulse. One hundred. I, I immediately. I got to 100%. it. Quick, I got it. I got to it quicker well, than the boy. He, the boy. He has thirty seconds. I've never seen anyone take a thirty second more relaxed. He's like, huh? Walks around, <laughs> yeah. looks at it. Like thirty seconds is clicking down. And we're with him the whole time. Throw it out. (laughs) We are with him the entire time. Take it all. Pick it all up. Run it outside. Right. Throw it out in the garbage. Nope. And he's like, piss. Now, what I imagine happens because the scene cuts. He must have pissed on them like a fire hose. Yeah. Like, yeah. it couldn't have just been, I'm pissing on the table. It's like, it had to get on the corn that the daughter's eating. Right. And you know, you know that kid's not hydrated enough. <laughs> he's too young to, he's not hydrated. There's no way. Right. That's well, not a let huge me t- bladder. Yeah. No. no. It, let me tell you this. They've been in the car for a long time. That's it, the true. rest of the Good movie, point. the rest of the movie, every member of the family should be like, remember, what you did yesterday. Remember, re- that should be the most important thing that's happened to them up until that point and the, in the future. Right. Literally, and you I stood thought... on the table and pissed all over dinner. <laughs> if what is child, wrong with you? If I had a child who, <laughs> on a vacation, yeah. stood right. up on top of the table and pissed all over our food, yeah. we are, the vacation's over. 100%. Like that's, done. that's yesterday's news. That's done. We pack up immediately mm-hmm. And we check him into some sort of a facility. Yes. Now, here's For what I will say about that. Like, things have gone bad. Like, and I think this, this whole family is slow to react. I mean, you know, like we said, like they, they don't deal with trauma well. The mom says in the beginning, you must banish the memory of your grandfather. <laughs> Banish. Right. Well, she also she also makes him say a sentence that no child would ever know, which is Grandpa Seth is just an invention of my subconscious, <laughs> which he isn't <laughs> technically. He is that child. A- that child should be taken away from her. So, like that is crazy. Well, it's this even is- crazy though. Sorry, Paul, but it's just it's also crazy that they are going on this sort of working vacation to process their grief 
and their loss of Grandpa Seth. Like, I don't think that, that that's also, part of it. She says that. She says it's she a, says I, I that that's it was just why to we're get, going. Oh, okay. Okay. She says that's why we're going so that we can, you know, try to move forward. And it's like, wow, you didn't want to go to a like a a sands or a, oh. you know, <laughs> right? You go to where you, you, to, where your, your former points. ancestors live. But also, you, you want to become a points. farmer use for a points. month? Yeah. Some that seems like a, a terrible idea. With a pool. Go someplace with a pool. She brings it up with the dad, and the dad's like, like he, he has he thinks grandpa is still here, and the dad's like. Yeah, I had an imaginary friend when I was a kid. Like, they're, they don't give a shit. Yeah, what year don't. is this, Paul? What year is this? 1990. Ooh. 1990. When you look on the poster on the wall, there is a poster of Michael Keaton in Batman. Also, this kid's the worst oh, wow. sports fan in the world. He's got so many opposing. <laughs> he's got teams that are enemies on the wall. Like, there, there's too much. They've got no rights to any of the Major League Baseball, but stuff. Too much stuff. I will say this, though. Um, it, here's my thought. I'm the daughter. I'm eating my corn. My brother starts pissing on the table. <laughs> I'm just going to pull back. I'm just going to eat that corn. Yeah. What, well, like, whoa. At that point, if he, didn't... he might. But Paul, in that 30 seconds, here's what I imagine, that in the, the 30 seconds, he managed to spray. He so he managed got to it. get everywhere. Yeah. Okay, I that, think right, he but... has to get everything, which yeah. means, let's be clear, because they're all holding food. He has pissed on all of them. From a standing because position at a get circular food, table. In order to get the food that they're holding, he would have to piss on their faces and chests. Yeah. And let's wow. let's where are those scenes? Did they shoot them? Well, I, I know that I was so. glad they weren't in there. I was glad they weren't she in there. She said that the food stunk cut. as she was throwing it out. <laughs> that was that to me him. gave me she everything did. that I needed to see. Her <laughs> scraping piss soaked dishes. And then the father. <laughs> I mean, there's so much to this movie. We could get by it by beat by beat. I mean, the fact that the other family <laughs> left the delineation of who's in what room, like they put cardboard, they put like a little construction paper up on each door. Like this is for Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. This is for the boy. This is for the girl. Why? Like when, they why did? would they just, why would, they, yes. yeah. So when yeah, he's running down that. the hall, every door has another label on it. Like, so the, like they're like, well, we've determined where your family sleeps. And the grandpa still got the wrong room. He went and haunted the. Yeah. the well, he's, he's it's a new it's a new layout for him. He I love that that he's like I don't I don't know the layout of this new place. That was pretty <laughs> funny. I loved it. I loved in the scene before when they're driving to town and they all get into a screaming fight, and the mom is like Joshua. Sing a song. Sing that song I like. Yeah, oh. and they yeah. sing row, row 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 your boat. That's the song she Public liked That's in 1990. <laughs> That's Sing our my favorite... favorite song, Joshua, as if she can't remember what it Not is. Not CNC June... Music Factory. <laughs> row, row, row your boat. Row, now, I will say this. I laughed at that, and I was like, "That's ridiculous." But then June, it did remind me of something that we have done on trips. What's that? We have sung the Burger King theme song in the row, row, row your boat <laughs> cadence with our family. <laughs> What's the Burger King theme yeah. song? Uh, what is it? I can't it's remember. Like, but... It's like uh, have uh, your way, oh, or like, like BK, oh. have it your way. You rule. <laughs> it, it's oh my God. very catchy, and I, I don't know, know it doesn't why make sense. this it doesn't has make become sense. a car trip <laughs> game for us, but it has, <laughs> and we dread it. We. <laughs> And don't don't doesn't Burger King have a new burger with Tillamook cheese on it? Hey, Tillamook, oh. you can't beat Tillamook oh. cheese. <laughs> Man, that sounds good. By the way, those hmm. poor actors, all the sweating of the green uh, and the goo and the like sandwiches the guy, with the green. It the just guy who disgusting. gets turned into disgusting. The guy that gets turned into a tree, all that yes. shit on him. Mm. It looked like he had an alien face hugger on his face. And you know, it just and took earlier in the so movie, long. it looked like the boy had a chest burster. There's yes. a lot of like references. <laughs> yes. Why can't they eat? Like when the father goes, you can't piss on hospitality, which I think is a beautiful sentiment. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, we, that's something that lesson learned. You can't piss on hospitality. And he, and he goes for his belt. And I think, oh no, he's that gonna, he's gonna like use that. his belt on yeah. the boy. And then he's like, no, I'm, I'm tightening my belt to take away the hunger pains. Yeah. Because. So Paul. He, yes. So here's what. So all the food's been pissed on. Sure. He can't go back and eat that. <laughs> the one general store in town has those 
l- farmers hanging out in there who okay. are not very welcoming and there's no food in town and it seems that they cannot get to any groceries sundries they're they're so they not, brought nothing they, they brought nothing they, with them they, they, they're so they angry that this food? family his family like, is like they didn't also, leave anything for us. It's like, of course they didn't leave anything. Like, right. That would be disgusting. A car. They have a car. They yeah. can go. What's confusing to me is the movie's logic would make more sense if they were stranded. Right. But they're right. not. No. They have the ability to move around as much as they want. They have also just arrived. Right. They arrive, they walk in, and the food is there. The boy pisses <laughs> on the food. Then they are, then they appear to be so hungry as to be. Haven't eaten in weeks right. instead of mere hours. Mustn't they have just had food on the road? What well, is going on? Also, there is a time problem because they say it's nighttime and it's bright as day. It sure is. And oh, God. They can't. They, can't. <laughs> they, they say, say this time of they night can't. and it yeah. is daytime. Just they can't shoot. Here is something they can't that I did here. Um, you know, the 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 script writer was Italian. Uh, she wrote it uh, in very um, in in a, in a rough English and. Uh, the actors begged her, like, can we just put this in our own words? And they said, no. Uh-huh. So they were not able, <laughs> Starting to make they were never able it. to ad lib. They were never able to like acknowledge what was going on. Like they had to just like, it was yeah, like, that's it was why like, a teenage uh, boy at one point said, don't fret. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, and so many, like the mother just calling him dear. Oh, dear. Go to bed, dear. It's dear. Oh, and I was like, so weird how much she's Very only strange. calling him dear. And I, I don't want to like talk like, look, yes. Is the acting bad in this? Of course. We don't need to go over it uh, that much. But I do believe the mom, and I want to just go back to it, the mom does look like she is heavily medicated. It's yeah. not like she's a bad actress. It looks like she is, or she has made a choice to seem like she's on Thorazine or something like that. Yeah. There is a, yeah, there's something going I on. I think those goblin masks, they blink more often than the mom does <laughs> in this movie. She just, just saucers <laughs> that do not move, no matter what's happening. She has nothing going on behind the eyes. She's gone. She's, girl. Yeah. she's, she's I wanted it to be revealed there. that the mom was in on the whole thing. The mom orchestrated like it. Like that she was, yes, she, she killed, killed her from father. This town. She brought them. She Yes, she's from this town and has some connection because it's her father that's on, that's Grandpa Seth. No, it doesn't seem like any of that. Is Nothing. Known. Here's my favorite part. It's a, a scene uh, eight. How they find out that Nilbog is Goblin. And I have oh, yeah. questions, he's but here, great. let's watch this. Grandpa! Grandpa Seth! Are you there? <laughs> Uh-oh. Nilbog! It's Goblin spelled backwards! This is their kingdom. What I love about this is there the plan was he will see the name of the town, he'll see Nilbog in a mirror, yeah. and it will be reversed. So then he'll be able to read Goblin. Yeah. But when he looks at it in the mirror, it still spells it, it's not reversed. It's, it's, there's no there's no difference. Indecipherable is what it is. Yeah. It's like you and and but yet he commits to, oh, for the first time I'm seeing it. Yeah. But there's no di- there is no. But here's the difference. thing: it it doesn't matter that Joshua finds out it's Goblin. Right. He knows there's Goblin. Exactly. He's the only one that knows the truth. Meanwhile, the father they've the him and his dad has have gone to the store. The father has fallen asleep within seconds yes. of sitting down outdoors in on a bench. Reading a a book that I believe just identifies different types of vegetables. It's called Cooking Vegetables, yeah. which Thank is you. which is also in a flip book format. Yeah, it's like a children's <laughs> book about cooking vegetables. He's like, oh, this looks you know, interesting. It's like that thing where in you there's just absolutely nothing to read, and you have time to kill, yeah. and you're like waiting in a waiting room or something. You're like, okay, I'll pick up this magazine that I otherwise Red wouldn't book. read. He has picked up this. Yeah. He's picked up a a picture, a child picture. But where was it? Is it sitting on the street? Because he's just. Sitting- I think it was sitting on that chair. And did that book put him to sleep, or is the father narcoleptic? Because from picking up that book to being completely zonked out <laughs> is is maybe thirty seconds. Yeah, at most. Yeah. <laughs> well, Paul, you you said you have some sort of a cheat sheet on goblins and yeah. trolls what do you 
<laughs> what do you see there about yeah. their relationship yeah. to vegetables? Yeah, get back, um, yeah. get okay. back to that. Like, let's go to the let's Good go to the culture. goblin faction. Yeah. All right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. this Thank is uh, of course by our producer uh, Molly Reynolds. She found this out. A goblin is a small, grotesque, monstrous creature appearing in folklore from European cultures. Um, they have all kind of temperance uh, temperaments. I'm sorry, and their appearances change based on the story or the country of origin. Um, Goblet is how you refer to a female goblin. And oh, uh, I don't think goblins, there were any female goblins. I didn't no. notice. It. I assumed they were all men. And maybe that's my bias that I have. Well, to and on. is the woman is the woman in the house that looks like a church? Is she like queen of the goblins? What's well, her I want to get into Thank her for bringing her up. Yeah, or is she the goblin queen? I want to just it's, a, it's Stonehenge, but it's not. I want to yeah, bring ahead, two things together and then because I, I want to get into this. I will also say this. The original English translations of the Smurfs, they were called the goblins. Oh, huh. So, okay. And I think that Gargamel. So Papa, Papa Goblin. Papa Goblin. H- Handy Goblin. Uh, brainy Goblinette, Goblin. Goblinette. <laughs> so, Goblinette. I, I'm realizing, and I want to hear more from you, Paul, on this, but I'm realizing <laughs> that I'm just thinking about gender and goblins now. And I'm like, well, I saw men, I think I saw many adults and children, w- women, g- women and girls turn into goblins mm-hmm. before my very eyes. But once they were goblins, I didn't see any gender identifiers. I assumed that they were all men, male they, creatures. They carried themselves like men, right? This seemed like a town and it, it seemed like the women in the town well, everybody that's know. a human is a goblin. I don't goblin. know that we're, I don't know that we, well, I may be. Right? Because everybody I mean, is everybody also. Everyone in town is a goblin. Yes. Everyone in town is certainly a goblin. But I do we believe that. that the Gargamel character, if we're keeping the Smurfs analogy, is like oh, she the is goblin queen? the goblin queen. Yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. she is like, these are my children. And she's pushing out because like she lives, she seems to be overseeing the everything. Pop. Yeah. Everything. And she had all of the infrastructure, special powers. Definitely. Doesn't she do something at the end that's super? Oh yeah. Oh, be- she people that turns have young. And yeah, that's right. Lightning and people that have powers in the movie don't really use. They use them like once, and then and, and yeah, yeah. So you can't really tell if it's like a thing that they go to a lot. Like even Grandpa Seth being able to shoot lightning. I was like, wait, right. why didn't we use this more freeze times? time? And also, yeah, we- and and also turns out that that the humans have power too, which is to just. I think think good thoughts. Mm. Now, Grandpa well, that Seth I have says a lot that, of questions. <laughs> we'll get to that, I guess. But Grandpa Seth says at the very end of the movie at Stonehenge, he's like, and obviously, as I've said before, just <laughs> be good. I'm like, sir, I have never heard you say this. <laughs> not once. What does that even mean? Let's just see. This. Let's be see good. the witch's introduction. This costume, and look again, they're low hanging fruit here. Bad acting. Bad sets, bad writing, whatever. I thought this woman was amazing. Me too. That's what I was going to say. And and this is the best, yes, best intro of any character. And I will say all of this while dressed like something you would get at a Halloween adventure. And to pull off that level of acting and that bad of a costume, really, truly. And then when she turns into the young version... With the lighting and the she was it's Stevie oh. Nicks like oh. in 1988. I it love fantastic. it. Like please, I would. That's a, like somebody could take her scenes and cut a rad yeah. 80s 90s music video. Avril, that, you I, that heard would it be right here. Like incredible. Yes, please, Avril. Please, great. Go ahead. Here we go. All right, this is the introduction. Scene three. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Credence Leonor Gilgul of ancient druid origins. My ancestors came from Stonehenge. Am I mistaken or is there something wrong with the two of you? We... <coughs> We need a doctor, ma'am. Please call the nearest hospital. There is no hospital in Nilbog. <laughs> we are used to curing ourselves. Loved it. Yeah. No notes. No. By the way, 
saying you're from Stonehenge is like saying I'm from the Empire State Building. Like it's not, <laughs> right. uh, it's not a place that like Stonehenge isn't like an area. It is a, it's a mo- Stonehenge is literally a monument. It's not it's a like, you town. Can't be from, yeah, you didn't live in Stonehenge. It's not like you well, can say I I'm from Atlantis. I, I did miss where where what did she say? Where did she say her her family? What, what, Ancient what Druid origins. Ancient. <laughs> that's the that's the most vague way of. Oh yes. Um. Where are you from? What where, where country are you from? Oh, I have ancient Druid origins. You know, uh, my dad is from Greece. My mom is of ancient Druid origins. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. A- Druid. ADO. My mom is ADO. My dad's from Greece. Listen, by the way, special How Does Give Me an All Star Jessica St. Clair has recently found out that that she has more than your average amount of Neanderthal in her blood. Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, some of us do have to, you know, have to identify. As oh, yeah. No, my 23 and me came back super high on ancient Druid origins. <laughs> super <laughs> high. Did, did Jessica St. Clair, did we, that really happen? Did she, Neanderthal? Yes, Adam. Yes. That's wild. She, is, she has a pretty high percentage. That's of fantastic. Paul. Yeah. Paul and Jason and Adam. Th- there's a moment where... They start, uh, Grandpa Seth starts talking about how it's not just that this woman, this witch, or whatever she is, Queen of the Goblins, um, has these powers, that the powers are coming from that little egg stone that she has that they must destroy. Oh. Yeah. And the cr- and uh. the light is coming from the crack in the rock, but then there's also the circular stone that's, th- there's a lot of magic that I that is never given at, at no. least as I could discern exposition to help us understand the the whys and the hows of right. it. It's just the there. rules are all over the place. Yes, and all of that feels very Rocky Horror. To me. Yeah, this whole everything inside of this house totally. felt very Rocky Horror picture in a in a wonderful yes. way. Like every part of this was straight. And nuts. if you're gonna have like a MacGuffin, like a, a, a power center, like a thing where the power is emanating from. You should just have one of them because otherwise yes. it just gets very confusing very fast. But yet it's all defeated by, and not to spoil it, a bologna sandwich. Like a bologna <laughs> yeah. sandwich really throws a wrench into everything. Because well, they don't like meat. You know, well, the goblins are also really so climate much warriors. Bologna. Yeah, I, I don't. I, and where did it come from, Grandpa Seth? The bologna sandwich? Yeah. Was he hoarding it? I mean, because the, the, the daughter also says, I was fasting for two days. She doesn't say, like, we yeah, didn't have why? food for two days. Was she fasting? By the why way, was she fasting? By the way, that's good That's good for her workout. She's getting jacked. She's she's cutting weight because she's a bodybuilder. I feel like the... the that's my head The cannon. writer, the, 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 the... Now I know the, the Italian woman who wrote this screenplay <laughs> was just hung up on food. And consuming you know what that's food. a great like reading. i just think they're and the filmmaker too just can't st- it's all about food and gro- how I grotesque say, it is but adam there's a monologue when a bunch of the townspeople are meeting in that little room yeah. that little underground basement i think for a service of some sort yeah. i don't know what that was a some, vegan service some they're just talking a, about the a vegan the, service yeah. it's like there will be blood and, yeah, and they're talking about how disgusting meat is. Yeah. I'm a vegetarian, I, and I'll tell you I, this much. But I will tell you, I found that monologue to be very effective. And <laughs> yeah. I am I don't yeah. eat meat, but I I watched that and I was like, yeah, it's disgusting. Well, it when is she says disgusting. When she says, think about the fats in your blood, think about the cholesterol. I was. I was. <laughs> But I do think on some level this writer wrote this because she's like, oh, I'm annoyed by my friends. Vegetarians are pissing me off. Yeah. And I'm writing them as these monsters. Their vegetarians are monsters to me. They get together. They commune. They talk about how great they are. Oh, they don't want to eat a steak sandwich. These fucking idiots. Give me more pizza Give with the sausage on steak it. steak sandwiches. You know, I used to eat meat. <laughs> I, I, I used to eat meat up until I saw this movie this afternoon. And then you 
Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'll be honest. Yeah. I watched this whole movie. N- not a thing was appetizing to me until that bologna sandwich. Yeah. And I was like, absolutely. Chomp, chomp. Let's go. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> nom, nom. I want that bologna sandwich. <laughs> Wait, now, I, I, everything else looked absolutely disgusting. Well, Jason, of course. I, I mean, I'm a vegetarian, but I wasn't looking at those meals. And I mean, those, of course, were not appetizing. The milk looked pretty good, I got to say. Here's oh, here's the Lord. part. Here's the only thing that looked good to me. Mm-hmm. The popcorn. The corn on the cob and the popcorn that resulted in it is is simultaneously the best food scene in it and the sexiest scene I've ever seen I, in my I, life. I Hit tell that you, clip. That scene worked. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, because if you can get a girl hot enough, she's gonna pop. <laughs> Again, that scene, I was like, I, I, I. Um, absolutely on board with this scene. I'm on board with the corn between them. I yeah. not. Oh, I, when they are it sharing successful. it, when they are lady in the tramping the corn on the cob, <laughs> I was fucking. I was, like, absolutely. I was ready to rock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I mean, by the way, like, why they... was that boy so turned on? Again, when we go back, and not to make it all about like gay panic, but she is. Like, so she's munching on that corn and he's like, oh, I wish that corn was my dick. Mm -hmm. And that's and but then they eat corn together. So he then he goes. So like the image is, oh, if that was my dick, that would be great. But then he it seems like he just wants the corn because they're eating corn together. Like when she puts it in his mouth. But the corn becomes then the the symbol of their explosive love because it one single ear of corn produces I'm going to say a metric ton of popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> like he is, uh, he drowns in it. Ears in popcorn. He is in a grave. He is dead. He's DOA inside of popcorn. <laughs> but they also, it also feels like they didn't have enough to really pull it off. That's I think just- you're right, Paul, that, that, that it's like almost there and they, and they didn't have quite enough popcorn to pull off the whole like drowning right. like in witness. So it's like, it appears that he could just stand up and he'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like somebody throwing popcorn at it, it just feels like aggressive because the popcorn like, where is it even coming from it should be coming from the kernel from the from the like, but it's coming from the side right like right. i mean that that happens a couple times isn't like george like looking down a hallway like left and right and then walks two steps and that troll just like pops out of the side yeah, yeah. it's like we, you would have seen him he's he's standing in the no hallway. one has peripheral vision i would like to say that i the chat has come up with a good joke and yes. it is geocorn. Oh, that's wow. great. The chat is saying that's geocorn, great. which is a home run. That's I don't know who said it. I just am seeing it s- splash by very quickly. Geocorn has shut down the chat. <laughs> it just uh, took over. I will say this. <laughs> there are some things that are disturbing about this whole family, too, because it's like the dads, you know, we, we, we talked about the mom saying banish your grandfather's memory from your mind. We've talked about like, you know, the, the, the son pissing on the table. And then also at one point, the dad says to the daughter, are you still smoking dope? Like still, <laughs> like, not like, ha- are you smoking dope? Are you still smoking? <laughs> Well, because they all know she's cool as hell. Yeah, she's the coolest. They all suck so hard. The movie should be about her. I scratch that. It's not about the boys in the RV. I'm only interested in Holly and what she's up to. She's working out for I don't know what. I wanted her to be so physically ready to do war, to do battle after having been working out so hard. Not the case. But she's fascinating. She's smoking dope. She's hanging out with the guys. She's giving him ultimatums. You're right. I want to talk about her. I'm so sorry to go back to her workout routine again but it's connected because i do think it's fascinating that they didn't have her they didn't have her like doing crunches you know like a classic young teenage girl like i gotta do like a hundred crunches and keep my stomach really really flat like she's straight up chest barbells pumping iron boom yeah 100 percent. well it's it's very much like we we didn't know about crunches in the 80s it was just right. barbells. We just did. And, and what's littered around her, more yeah. weight. <laughs> there were no split yet, squats yet her body, in the 80s. <laughs> but there's her no body, yoga. There's no yoga no. mat. Yeah. There's nothing. Pilates. And I will just say, like, her, her body is is great. I, I, I say, it's not the, okay, be whoa, cool, whoa, bro. Whoa. Be cool. Take her it easy. Is, Take it easy. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's not the body of a bodybuilder. Like, the amount of weights that she has in her room. 
I would I would expect a, a different kind of body. I was just it thinking was, it looked this, exhausting. Let me ask you this. Is this her way of dealing with grief? Is this ah, her way of embracing embracing health and life in the face of death? Very good, Jason. Holly is saying, you know what? I will build my body. I will strengthen my body. I will rem- choose to remember Grandpa Seth. Because keep in mind, she also sees Grandpa Seth in a mirror. Sure does. And that's super weak. Scares the shit right? out of and her. Never, and doesn't, <laughs> does. really, that doesn't back up the boy at all. The boy still remains, everybody thinks he's crazy. Yeah. I, 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 I will say that I, with all that working out, I wish I agree. I wish she would have just fucking shredded some of those trolls at the end. Just take yes. them out with her power. Yeah. Give her a sword. No, she, does, her something. she does deck Elliot pretty hard. She does. I mean, she destroys him. Weird sound effect punch. for the uh, punch. Sure. But yes, she does. Sure. <laughs> oh, um, this movie does have some interesting cinematography in the sense that like there's like a cake POV. Like we're coming That's in right. on the like, there's some shots that are surprising yeah. in it. Like there are some things that that feels like there's some artistry here. Uh, but when that cake comes into frame and they're going into their face at the party that's in full, like they have a surprise party for no one at their house and they're and they're not fully put off by it and this is moments after the dad comes into a barn where he's watching his son being held down forcibly and being force fed ice cream like and the dad's like all right we got to go but back but the to- ice cream wasn't green which was interesting That's yeah right. the ice cream was was white it looked like whipped cream or something like yeah. that it was, so again i don't want to be just pointing out inconsistencies cuz i don't think they add up to anything but that helped it, it wasn't helping me figure out the rules it was clearly not like, ice if cream if he eats too. anything that they give him does he turn into a a, a pile of green goo well right. this is or, the thing even the girl with the it? beautiful freckles in the beginning of the movie i mean and i haven't seen natural freckles like that Oof, i mean I, what a blessed, <laughs> Definitely blessed real, freckles. Yeah. Well, Paul, just so you, yeah. you guys know, there is a, a very big beauty trend where women are putting freckles on that look like mm-hmm. that. Wow. Wait, what? Right now. Yeah. Maybe not that like distinct, Like, like there, Raggedy Ann and Andy yeah, painted on? Yeah. There's a lot of young women who um, are... And they're... And, different beauty brands are selling these freckle pens That's right. and also wow. freckle patches where you put this patch patches on yeah. and Whoa. then you pull it off and you have like this like oh i wish i'd known i would have put freckles on for this show broccoli yeah, freckles so is that what they're called broccoli freckles i don't know <laughs> they might be i don't know but i've seen on tiktok paul is yeah, vegetable that crazy <laughs> that corn that corn is going straight to paul's head he's only <laughs> thinking about vegetables uh, broccoli for asparagus guys pimples. guys <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh there is so Ooh, much are they cruciferous are they cruciferous be- uh, freckles <laughs> i mean just think about little freckles on brussels sprouts how cute that would be right anyway uh who's with me um i'll say this much there is i mean there's so much to get into i want to also like i want to open up to questions i want to i want to get into it all i do think it's worthy of just highlighting the boy who goes to the store only gets milk and then is chugging and running with milk the most disgust like oh oh like it felt hot it felt like he was actually drinking milk too and i was like oh it also seemed to me to be that the milk was thicker and grosser so why not just get rid of toss it well, you know, I still horrified to think about how many times I, I would run in from like playing outside as a kid. And I don't I mean, I didn't have a glass of water till I was 18 years old. And so I would water run was in. never an option. When was you were never. Child. Nobody ever offered. No it one offered. Water. Well, it was literally, bad for you. It was bad yes, for you. I literally would fill up a giant like pint glass of milk. Yep. Of whole Shug milk. It down. Chug oh it. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've done my thick, thirst. That thick viscous vitamin D to quench that there. I, I've That's talked about disgusting. this, uh, and I forgive me for bringing it up again, but my nighttime ritual was something I saw in Laverne and Shirley, uh, which was mixing Coke and milk, and I would drink it before bed. Ew, really? Paul. Wow. I remember that from wow. Laverne you and must Shirley. Have, your sh- Did it keep you up? Your shits must have been crazy. Yeah, insane. I mean, I'm lactose intolerant, too, so there <laughs> oh. must have been some moment. I mean, that was- Are you still doing that? 
a little bit. Almond milk. <laughs> Every now. other night. Almond milk and Pepsi. I would, love it. I would love it if June came down, like, just, like, suddenly to get something after you thought she was in bed and she caught you pouring your, <laughs> like, whole milk and, and coat. Jason, she catches me doing some weird shit all the time with food and it upsets her so much. Like, I, you yelled at me, June yelled at me the other day. She's like, take your cereal out of here. I was eating cereal too late and then the day, mixing my cereal, mixing... I'm mix. I'm making mixes Gross. downstairs. Ah, uh, that's fun though. Um, <laughs> mixing like Crispex and Cheerios. Yes. I, I don't, first of all, I don't even like seeing people eat snacks. I'm someone who wants to see <laughs> my loved ones eat a meal at, at a meal time. Eat your snacks. Yeah, you got mad at me. You were like, stop snacking. snacks. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't want to see anybody eat. Eat on your own yeah. time. And eat on privately. Your own time. Yeah. You know what? Eat privately. I don't need to see that process. Uh, I, I'll tell you this much. Um, let's go and pick some questions from the audience because I want to get to some of the special things that we have, some special guests that we have. Uh, yes. So uh, this one is Bad Jim Varney writes, uh, did the dad think they were actually going to do some farming? Like, was there actual farm work? And this is a great question. It seemed like he yes. mentioned it, it a couple seemed like times. they were responsible for keeping up that family's farm. It, they didn't seem like they were on the farm. They seemed like they had no knowledge of that in fact paul in fact when when the dad put the boy to bed um the night he pissed all over the dinner food when he put the boy to bed he said something about like we're getting up bright and early like crack of dawn we're out here tending to the farm and then the next morning he did not seem to get up early and do any farm work or chores no, they didn't. They no. never seem to even acknowledge the farm. But look, they're also dealing with a kid who's pissed all over the table. They're so hungry. <laughs> Do they have to grow their own food? I mean, they. Yeah, it. it, it this is a. This is a bad vacation. Like you said, a bad vacation. But I didn't see any farm tractors or anything. Yeah, it wasn't. Didn't it didn't anything. seem like a farm to me at all. No. Yeah, it, it didn't even seem like a farming town. It seemed like a sad town. But it seems like a town where, like, do they just bring in one family a month and then they live off of that family? Right. Yeah. And everybody feasts on that one family. I mean, you would think, I mean, what an embarrassment of riches then to have this family of four plus the RV of four. That's like, that's eight. People. That's eight servings for twenty five people total. That's pr- that's pretty. But good also, what did those east. weirdos do with their house? They went and stayed in their house, right? Okay, but they, they were didn't, they were though. they just stayed in right. town because they, they just stayed in town. They had no desire to oh, go. They didn't. They were leave. just gonna wait. Oh. They were like they. Their plan was they're gonna go inside that's eat right. the food. They'll turn to trees and we'll eat them. But this is my issue. If I'm a goblin, if I'm a troll, that family gets out of the car. I stab them. And really? I don't have to go through all this pomp and circumstance all of making rigamole. a meal or doing right. all this sort of stuff. But I think you've got, I don't think, I think that, that remember the guy says it, you, blood will ruin the meat or something like oh. that. You can't, you can't ruin, don't ruin the meat or it's not, that's not quite what he okay, says. So but you need there is eat. a sentiment that there is a, a, way to a process it. that needs to be, that needs to be adhered yeah. to. Otherwise it renders the people inedible to the goblins okay they, again what are we talking about i hate this <laughs> now look um, uh, now i know that you're saying that i'm obsessed with with uh with you know obviously vegetation fruits and vegetables and things like that uh now i will say that there is this middle ground in the movie about vegetables and plant life which are different things right vegetable like like trees like growing into a tree is different than becoming like a vegetable, a vegetable, like trees and vegetables are not the same thing. No. I mean, right? Or, I mean, I just <laughs> It's felt a that- good question. I don't under... This gets back to... I'm not sure why somebody turns into a pile of goo that everybody just starts immediately eating versus Arnold, who gets turned into a sprouting tree that gets put... He gets planted into a planter. Um, and with his coffee mug, he must have, that poor guy must have been in this position oh my God. for so oh. long on that oh. shoot Can you even with imagine? all that shit all over him. What a miserable day's work that must have been. Wait, oh, there, someone is saying that they nailed his shoes to the floor so he couldn't move. What? Yeah. That's how what? they kept him in that spot. They nailed his shoes they, to the floor. The actor's shoes to the floor. That's, I guess, in the documentary. <laughs> what? Now, uh, but what just are you going. Saying? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, now, going, now, not the wardrobe, the shoes. Uh, so um, here's the, the thing that I was getting back to. So, Nil Blogger uh, wrote 
why did they all have that clover skin mark? This is again going to like That's a great so question. clover leaf. We're going to Halloween three. There's a lot of like the clover doesn't necessarily translate into the tree either, but everybody who is but but somehow that s- suggests or again connotes some sort yeah. of folkloric yeah. Irish, Scottish, the greens of like that. I don't know. Are we are we to what's the book? Okay. What's the book at the beginning? The chat will, I'm sure, chime in. What is the book at the does the book that the uncle that grandpa Seth is reading to the boy in the beginning help give us a sense of what what mythology we're even inside of, if any? Or is it just this Italian woman's melange of different folkloric ideas? I mean, now I'll tell you this. The, the grandfather, this is from uh, Grandpa Seth. It reads from a book entitled Davy and the Goblins while telling Joshua Davey. the story of Peter and the Goblins. Hmm. So the book is called Davy and the Goblins. What? <laughs> story. Now, I'm, I, think, I now think Grandpa Seth is a villain. <laughs> and I'm also like, if you're going to call one grandpa Grandpa Seth... Then where's the other grandpa? And like, I always Ooh. find it interesting. Yeah, is like Grandpa Ron out there somewhere? Is he passed on? Right. Or is he right? You know, and why not just call him fucking Grandpa? And not not a single mention of any grandmas. There's no grandmas. Oh. It was immaculate conception. Yeah. Grandpa Seth just bore these children by himself. Yeah. Ooh, that's interesting. That's I mean, interesting. <laughs> but as a go- as a some sort of a goblin adjacent person, I believe that they might have just grown out of him like fruit from that's a right. tree. Um, another question I will get here is um, Doc Buttons uh, wrote this. Did anyone else think the dad was going to pee on the kid after he yes. peed oh, on yes. the food? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yes. I was hoping for it. Either that, or I just mean, present I, his I, penis. Yeah. I, that it felt very. I mean, the way he wrong. took it, the way know. he took it, it was like he did look like it. At first, it was like he's going to hurt him with it, and then it's like he's going to do something. <laughs> something bad's a coming. Bad. That's all. Bad. I Either way, yeah, it I've, definitely. Not good. It, none not of good. none of the dad's business with his belt worked on any level. No. It, it just suggested a myriad of terrible things That's are right. about to happen. That's right. <laughs> Um, uh, now let's, uh, let's talk about this. Um, look, we have opinions about this film. There are a, lo- a lot of opinions. Some people say it's the worst film ever, but there are other people out there with a different opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever heard, it's now time for second opinions. Ben Lee, take it away. Don't trust the mainstream for information. Don't trust Grammarly. For punctuation, don't trust the surgeon to make incisions. Check out Amazon user reviews, get a second opinion. Second opinions. Second opinions. Great. The great. Ben Lee, he is amazing. Um, uh, just one of the most creative, so fun, cool. down That's to cool. uh, do whatever person. He's so incredibly talented. And like I said, his Substack is great. There's podcasts, there's things. Him and Ioni uh, do a bunch of great uh, stuff on there. I really, really love it. Um, these are five star reviews pulled from Amazon. It was hard to find these reviews. Uh, but I will say this. There are 1,240 reviews. 79% are five star. 7% are one star. So, you know, people love this movie. And the first one is from, uh, Jesse Purdy. Wow. This is certainly a movie. Five stars. (laughs) (laughs) So a little bit like we have these fun ones in here, but you know what? Again, I figured let's call in the big guns. We put a word out to this next performer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Billy Porter reading a second opinion. All right. I'm Billy Porter, and this review is by someone called T.K. Raw. The subject line is a masterpiece. T.K. Raw (laughs) writes... I don't like to throw around superlatives recklessly, but I wouldn't be surprised if God himself wrote and produced this film. It's stunning and perfect. Five stars. Five, (laughs) five, five, five. five. Across the board, the category is five stars, darling. (laughs) 
Amazing. Incredible. Billy Porter, thank you so much oh, for doing great. that. Incredible. Amazing. Uh, I want to read Perfect. one more here. Uh, this is from uh, Jacob Debray. Jacob Debray writes, this movie was amazing. You could truly feel the pain of the actors as they were being devoured by the goblins. I wish I had a grandpa like Joshua. Five stars. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, uh, I, I love that he wants that grandpa. That grandpa did not make me f- feel easy. No. Uh, that grandpa no. made me feel uncomfortable. And his name was Seth. It felt like there was... It felt like there was going to be a reveal for the grandpa that would have felt meaningful, yeah, and there really wasn't. He just appears, gives the boy a backpack, and disappears well, he again. He certainly wasn't a warm, loving no. presence, no. you know, to connect to. He was scary. Yes. I mean, he was scary. actively scary. Scared straight is sometimes what you have to do. Let me tell you this. If you haven't donated because you've ever got it, I, I still want to be surprised. We had Ben Lee. We had Billy Porter. We've had a lot of people here, but I think when you when you think about this movie, you go... The, the centerpiece, the, the rock of this movie is the dad, George Hardy. And you know what? Let's hear a second opinion from George Hardy. Hey, it's George Hardy. Wow. And I played the dad in the movie Troll 2. Wow. It was made in 1989. And here I am today to read a second opinion oh. for how did this get made? Sweetheart. What an honor to be asked. So <laughs> I do want to let you know, Mr. Sean Kelly did write in. And I've got this memorized by now. Sean wrote in, hey, how did that trash movie Troll 1 compare to Troll 2? Well, Troll 2 makes sense. And everybody was trying to make a good movie. They really were. So I give it a five star. But he asked one more question. Why is it called Troll 2 when there's no trolls in Troll 2? There's goblins. Anyway, (laughs) I don't know. They were just going off some coattails, I think, of Troll. Anyway, <laughs> hey, you guys, you got to remember one last thing. You can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. Yes! Have a great day. Yes! Troll yes! two. Troll yes! two forever. Yes! He said it. He said the wow. line. George Hardy is the best. That was amazing. What a hero. The best. And I Jack, right? I mean, he looks He looks in great. Shape. He looks great. He looked well, great he then. He looks great now. He, looks yeah. great he kept now. the weights from the That's daughter's right. room. That was, what he, that was the thing he took from set. Um, all right. So let's go around. Anything that we haven't talked about that we want to talk about? And uh, we got some more surprises. So here we go. You know, the only thing I want to say is I don't know if we touched on um, the line, I'm Sheriff Gene Freak. Gene, oh, Gene I didn't, Frank. Yeah, I don't think I'm... Gene Frank? No, I thought it was Gene <laughs> Freak. I wrote Gene down Gene Freak. Freak? Yes. <laughs> no, it was... Definitely Gene, Gene Freak. Gene I'm looking at the IMDb. Freak. It is oh, Sheriff Gene Freak. Because I wrote it down. Like, oh, a man Gene. in the a oh, town so person good. announced Freak. that he was he introduced himself as Sheriff Gene Freak. June, not just the townsperson, the sheriff <sighs> of a twenty-five person town, which he is one of, so twenty-four person town, which four of the members are away on vacation. So really a twenty person town. We've seen everyone <sighs> in this town. Yeah, we have. And they all go. We haven't talked about when they are all around. When they, we talked a little bit about they're all at the house, the family's house. Yeah. When they come back and they're throwing them an impromptu party. And then Grandpa Seth appears corporeally (laughs) with a Molotov cocktail. The The priest comes out. They fight. They they have, they fight. And Grandpa Seth. Uh, zaps the priest. The priest lights on fire. So only the boy and the fire and the, the engulfed in flames priest are in the yard. Everybody comes out. They put the priest out and it's a goblin. Of course, the corpse is a goblin. But everybody's the boy has done like it feels so much like the boy has just done all of it. You know what I mean? That the, right, that so the he, boy like, so is when, out there. When just, the dad runs out there, he sees a man on fire and the boy standing there. He's like, and this, the is boy. The, this is my son. He just pissed on the table. He's seeing yes. his, visions of his grandfather. Now he's lit a priest on fire. <laughs> yes. And the father yes. just calmly puts him out. Like he doesn't like, yeah. he's like, ah, oh, man. He knows exactly where that fire extinguisher is. Like he, he knows like, oh, we keep it randomly just on the side of the porch. Doesn't he say, I'm going to distract insane. him with this, with the fire extinguisher? Yeah. Yes. With the Molotov cocktail. Yeah. Oh, oh. What I, I also, Paul, I, you pulled the "Oh my God" clip, which I just think is very. Oh funny. yeah, clip we, four. yeah. Let's let's play let's play this because we haven't played this. Let's play oh clip yeah, four. this is great. <laughs> oh my God! What's happening to her? 
Then why can't I move? There, there must be a logical reason for all of this. Shut up! <laughs> They can't see her from there. <laughs> they're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this man, this actor is amazing. Incredible. And, and I, I don't even think this is his best scene because his best scene is when the girl is attacked in the woods and he goes out to the goblins and says like yeah guys hey get out of here get it. leave her alone yeah. get, like he doesn't he react to, to the here. fact that these are full on yeah. creatures he's goblins. Like, no. these are he's goblins like, guys, monsters he's like, guys, she's not saying today, they're not monsters right yeah he's like it's not a good time he's like i'm out here trying yeah. to get laid guys yeah, like, you got to you got to scram this also where he he tackles the girl in the forest is that the same guy girl yeah, that's right yes. before and this she yes. hits the ground so hard face first into the <laughs> and you know they had no stunt people on this movie this no. poor woman no. just gets and taken he stays down. on her he yeah. also stays on her like they're in a romantic like they're rolling around it's like if i was like, I'm like thank you for i don't know what he was doing but like yeah, yeah. get off yeah. me now no, dude. immediately yeah. he's like i'll show you a human body oh like, my god no. all right so her. i will tell you this we've gathered here tonight for a very good reason you know to raise money for move on and I wanted to end the show with something special. Uh, I've talked about it throughout the episode. Michael Stevenson, the young boy, the boy, um, he made a great documentary. It's called Best Worst Movie. You got to watch it. But we reached out to him and um, he wanted to do something very special for the show. So I, I have a full video of him. I cut it down to a three, like a, a quick version here. Well, I'll put the full video up on my YouTube channel right now. You can go check it out after the show. But this is a brief word from Michael Stevenson uh, about this movie. I, I love this. So here you go. The boy speaks. The boy speaks. I wanted to share something with you today that I have not shared before. An original prop from Troll 2. Wow. This is the chest piece. Uh, this, look at Whoa. this. Whoa! I can smell this, and I, <laughs> it's an, the smell of the latex, it's, it instantly brings me back to uh, European cigarettes. That's the smell of European cigarettes and, and old stale pizza in, in, in boxes. <laughs> That's what we ate every single day was cheap pizza. Not like fancy Italian pizza, but like cheap like <clears throat> Domino's pizza. And they never ordered new pizza. It was the same pizza. They just ordered a big one, I think, at the beginning of the production. Oh. And then we just kept eating from oh. the same pizza throughout oh. the production. First time that I watched it, I remember watching it uh, with my family. 11 seconds into this film or film this VHS tape my dad says Michael this is a terrible terrible movie oh uh, wow <laughs> but all these years later I can't tell you any longer that I feel Troll 2 is a bad movie I think it is <laughs> a magical movie I think that you know you think about the number of films that get made more resources, more budget, fancy stars, fancy set, whatever it is, they're forgotten about. Almost many of them mm. are forgotten about almost immediately after they, they're released. Uh, and Troll 2, for reasons not intended or planned, has become something, a film, a, a piece of work that will never be forgotten about. Yes, Fuck. yes, yes, the yes. best. I love yes. it. Yes, boy, the boy speaks the truth. Yes. The boy speaks. You can watch the whole video that he made for us uh, on awesome. my YouTube page. And uh, please make sure you check I out mean, his documentary. That's great. It is. It's a great documentary. It it's is. A great, it's, it's a terrific. best worst movie. Adam, um, it was amazing stuff. to have you back. Thank June, you, guys. Jason, what a night here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning Thank in. You, Adam Thank Scott. you for spending Friday night with us. Thanks, Good guys. Night. Thank you, Adam Scott. Bye-bye. So bye. See bye. you next time. That's a wrap on Troll 2. Thank you to the entire team at MoveOn.org for helping us put that together. We raised $181,000. And guess what? You can still continue to donate. How? 
Well, we have these amazing shirts, the Nilbog Milk t-shirt. You can get it as a sticker, a coffee mug, whatever you want. You can get it at tpublic.com. And every bit of the money that we make from that is also going to move on, which is ensuring that people get out to vote. Thank you, Move On. Thank you, Billy Porter. Thank you, Cast of Troll 2. And thank you, Ben Lee. Holy cow. I love that new Second Opinion song. Um, People, how did this get made? And Dinosaur are coming to the East Coast. First of all, what's Dinosaur? Jason Manzukis, myself, Nicole Byer, Carl Tart, Lisa Gilroy, Seth Morris, Rob Hubel, and more improvising for your pleasure. That's right. We are going to be in Brooklyn, Boston, and D.C. We've already sold out our first show in Brooklyn. We added a second show, and that is just a mere few seats away from being sold out. So grab a friend. Tell everybody that you know Dinosaur is coming to D.C. and Boston and Brooklyn, and you can get your tickets right now. Just go to hdtgm.com. And How Did This Get Made is going back to Philly. That's right. And we're going to bring them a good movie this time. We have to. Philly, we're coming to you November 16th. November 16th, we will be in Philly. Our L.A. dates are pretty much sold out, except for November 8th. Get your tickets for that right now. Man, oh, man. So many shows. But keep your eyes peeled, because... We might be opening up some more tickets to New York. Uh, It's sold out very quickly. But for you, we might have a few more in the coming weeks. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody. Remember, if you have a correction or omission from Troll 2, you can leave me a voicemail at 619-PAULASK. That's 619-PAULASK. Or write a comment on our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm. Then make sure to tune in next week to our Last Looks follow-up episode to hear me respond to your messages and announce our next movie. Please, if you don't know by now, Jason joins me on every Last Looks to chat about movies, TV, books, and we even get to talk to some of our favorite friends. So if you're not listening, what are you doing? I mean, we got good interviews on that show. Really fun interviews. Anyway, um, I, I will always remind you because I'm out there plugging it all the time. My book, Joyful Recollections of Trauma, is still available as an audiobook, as an ebook, and as a regular book book. And if you want me to personalize your book, I'll do anything. I'll put a lot of stuff in there. Team Fred, not that. But everything else is fair game. You can go to my website and you can order a book at Chevaliers. They don't charge you anything more for it. I just have a deal with Chevaliers. You can also see where I've signed books and left them around the country. Um, but definitely, if you like the book, write a Google review uh, or an Amazon review, I should say. And remember to keep the reviews coming on Goodreads. I am blown away. Thank you so much. And remember one more thing, another remembrance here. Um, If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure that you subscribe to our feed and you have automatic downloads turned on. It helps us. Wink, wink, helps us. Anyway, um, last but not least, I got to thank our entire team for whom this show could not be done without. I'm talking about our producer, Scott Sonny and Molly Reynolds, our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineer, Casey Holford, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros. That's all I got, people. We'll see you next week on Last Looks. Bye for now. Bye for now.